Buzzheads, Curtis Tucker here, That Buzz Guy, with another episode on That Buzz Guy podcast. Hey, hope everybody's doing good out there. We are getting through this mess. Uh, I know uh, a lot of people are still out of work, unemployed. Some people have not even gotten any of their stimulus or their unemployment money yet. So I know you guys are really hurting out there. I wish we could go through all of this stuff really quick, and I wish we were a year down the line, you guys were making money, but... um, You know, we're just going to keep plodding along and uh, just a reminder, you know, to get these things going. Um, Hopefully we get uh, you guys uh, something going so you won't even have to return to work that or if you do return to work, you're going to have a new side gig, something that you really love that you're doing. So um, let's continue with this. Even if you do get your job back and you go back to work, um, go ahead and continue with the side gig, the side business thing and uh, see what you can get going. And so um, just reminders, I want you guys to um, get started as soon as possible. I don't know if I've gone over this before, but even though I'm kind of kind of slow dripping all of this information out to you guys, don't wait until like tons of episodes are out before you start. Start tomorrow. I mean, listen to this episode and um, look back at or listen back at some of the other episodes uh, that I've done or watch the videos. But go ahead and start something tomorrow. It doesn't matter what it is because at least you're going to get started. You're going to start learning. You're going to start putting something out there. And so um, some quick ways to doing that is if you think and you don't have to stick to this, you can always change it. If you think you want to blog, go to blogger.com or tumblr.com, or there's a bunch of different ones, but you can go to Google and just type in um, free blogging, but but try blogger.com, and you can set up a blog there. Go ahead and start blogging about anything. You know, if you don't know what your subject is, blog about something, upload it. Uh, If you think you want to try podcasting, download the Anchor Anchor app to your phone, completely free, set up an account, and basically you put the phone up to your mouth and you start talking and you can record your own podcast. Uh, You don't need microphones, you don't need mixers, you don't need anything, and then go ahead and upload that and uh, it'll be online and then you can listen to it, see how your voice sounds, Uh, you can look at your writing on the blog, or just take your camera and start videoing yourself and then upload that. I want you to open up a YouTube account and upload that to YouTube. You don't have to tell anybody that any of your stuff is there. But while you're listening to the these episodes that I'm doing for you guys and, and other things, and I hope you guys are doing a lot of other things, researching things on your own in between the times that I'm doing the podcast, because you got to keep learning, you got to keep moving forward, you got to be consistent, but you got to get this thing going. If you don't get, get ramped up and get going, you're not going to get anywhere. So let's get rid of all the excuses. Uh, start one of those three things tomorrow. And uh, as you go along, hopefully these episodes of my podcast will help you uh, get better and take you to the next level on everything, but you've got to get started with something. And so today, so, so getting started, what my philosophy, and, and again, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of people out there saying a lot of different things because we all do things differently. And so I'm kind of a, what you would consider kind of an organic guy. I like to do everything organically and on my own. And so it's probably going to maybe take a little more effort and a little longer, but it's going to be free. You're going to learn it because you're doing it yourself. So um, I'm not one to say jump in there and buy a bunch of these courses and and things like that. Uh, I, I think just decide what you want to do and then just start doing it and just jump in. Don't, don't, Don't spend a lot of time trying to come up with a plan. I mean, even the person with the best plan, you're going to get in there and you're going to start to pivot and you're going to do something else. So uh, just jump in and start figuring it out on your own. Listen to this podcast and a lot of other ones uh, to get some tips and stuff to get you going. And again, like I said, this this podcast, uh, hopefully in the long run, will make everything that you're doing better but uh, just get going. And so, so I think everybody needs a website, no matter what you're doing. If your side gig is, is a musician or an artist, or let's say you've started a business or you're selling a product or, um, you know, let's say you have the most fantastic Instagram account and you're uh, just uploading pictures because you're a model, you still need a website. Um, you're, you still want to be found in Google. You still want to have a place to go back to. I consider your website is kind of like your house and so everybody's got a house have to have a house to go back to and so today's episode we're going to talk real quick about um, domain names so you cannot have 
a website that can be found on the internet without a domain name. And so basically a domain name is nothing more than the name of your website. And so for most people, it's real easy. You name your uh, website or your domain after your business, your brand, your company, um, your product, or your personal name. But now some people may not know exactly what they want to do, or they may want to come up with something more creative or things like that. So we're going to go over some of the some of the rules that I've I've found. So I've purchased probably between 100 and 150 domain names since I got online in 1999. I bought my first domain name in 1999. And I wish I had known a lot more about it back then. I just jumped in and bought it um, because there was a lot more domain names available, especially .coms. And uh, had I bought those, I could have made a lot of money because there's a lot of uh, money that you can make in flipping domain names. But anyway, your website is going to have to have a domain name. And so basically what the domain name is, um, think of it as like a phone number. You know, back in the day, everybody had these um, 1-800 numbers. And so it'd be like 1-800-843-2665. And, but nobody could really remember that. And so they started coming out with like 1-800-THE-COOL. And so when you'd see a commercial, the cool, you know, you could remember 1-800-THE-COOL. And so those are kind of what we call vanity vanity phone numbers and these are like vanity URLs or your vanity domain name so it's just an easy way of of remembering your domain names because when you host a website on a server the the internet has to know where to find you and so it goes to the registrar of your domain name and then the name servers there will tell the browser where to go find your website um, and so you're assigned numbers like IP and IP address for your website. Well, people, again, it's like a phone number. People are not going to remember all those numbers. So the easy way to do it is they came out with domain names. So everybody needs a domain name. And again, and then uh, an important thing that I want you guys to know is, you know, sometimes the domain name is more important than the website because whoever controls the domain name controls the website. So you could build the coolest website and your partner might have the domain name. And if you guys split, you get the website, he gets the domain name. All he's got to do is change the name servers to point to a new website that he builds. And when people go to that domain name, they're going to end up at his website. Your website may still be on your computer, but it's no longer going to be on the internet because you don't have a domain name pointing to it anymore. So it's going to be important. So if you have somebody build your website or you're in a partnership or a business or you go to a host, make sure you own the domain name or you are in control of the domain name. So uh, write down the username and password to get into that so you can get in there and change things if you need to. So that's the important part of a domain name. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over some of the rules that I have followed over the years on um, which domain names to buy. And so um, the first one is, like I said, uh, just buy a domain name. If your name, my name is Curtis Tucker. So I bought CurtisTucker.com a long time ago. I bought my daughter's their names.com. Um, if your business is Bob's Chicken Ranch, by bobschickenranch.com. And so, um, you know, again, if you know exactly the name of your business or you're going to use your name, then, um, you know, just buy your name, uh, which is real easy. But again, if you don't, then you're going to have to get a little bit creative. And, it, and so domain names run anywhere between $8 and $12 a year. So you're going to have to pay for that every year. Um, and at the end of this, I'll remind you, but I'm going to tell you again now, uh, make sure you have auto renewal on so you don't lose your domain name. We'll talk about that here in a little while. But um, so uh, buy a domain name. Oh, the thing is, so my point was eight to twelve dollars. So if you get, you know, three months down the line and you decide, oh, th that wasn't the name that I wanted. I'm, I'm wanting to do something different. You've lost twelve bucks. You know, go buy another domain name. Just don't wait a year or, you know, after you get a huge amount of traffic coming to your website to change the name. You know, you're right now you're in the starting 
part of all this. So you've got time to, to pivot and change things and all that. So, so just buy something. If you're going to put up a website, if you're not going to go to blogger.com, uh, they give you like a temporary domain name. And so you don't actually have to go buy, but eventually you're going to want to buy your own domain name and have a WordPress website. If you're listening to me, I'm going to highly recommend, uh, number one, a website, number two, it'd be WordPress and number three, you, you have your own domain name. So, uh, so anyway, so think about what uh, your domain name is going to be. Again, I've got CurtisTucker.com. Um, I named my business here locally Enid Buzz. So I bought EnidBuzz.com. And, uh, and so uh, those are kind of the main, you know, those were real easy. When I was doing graphic design, I wanted something a little more creative. And so I came up with ShaggyDuck.com. So I've come up with a lot of different names over the years. Um, and, and, you know, usually when people go to search for you online, people that are a little bit more sophisticated, like if the name of your business is Shaggy Duck, they're going to know to try to go to shaggyduck.com and find your website. And usually they will. Now, if it's somebody that's not, you know, doesn't know the internet, like some of us do, they're going to go to Google. They're going to type in Shaggy Duck. Well, um, Google is probably going to rank you really high for Shaggy Duck. Dot, you know, if you have ShaggyDuck.com, and so so you want to go with your brand or your name or your company name, uh, something like that. Um, what you may run into, though, uh, a lot of people with really popular names, especially business names and personal names, is um, if you didn't buy it a long time ago, it may be gone. A lot of the mo more popular words and names are gone. So uh, if you missed out on that, that's where you're going to have to start to get a little bit more creative. And um, so if you can't get your exact domain name, you may have to um, change it a little bit. So when I started doing um, cartoon logos online, I would have loved to have had cartoonlogos.com. Now, that wasn't my name, that wasn't my company name, but sometimes you may want to buy the keywords that people are looking for just because it makes it easy. So, you know, uh, if somebody was looking for cartoon logos, ideally a lot of those would just go to cartoonlogos.com and hopefully find you. But of course it was taken, so I had to get a little bit more creative. So I purchased eCartoonLogos.com and, and I believe I still own that today and um, that was one of my cartoon logo websites was eCartoonLogos.com. And so you could, or you could do like cartoon logos, um, okay, because I live in the state of Oklahoma or uh, cartoon logos USA. Um, you know, sometimes you're going to have to maybe add something to the end or to the beginning just to change it up a little bit so you can get that domain name. So uh, start thinking about those ideas. Uh, get online, search. You can basically just type in the .com that you want. If there's nothing there, you can go to whois.org and look it up and make sure it hasn't been purchased. Or go to a registrar. I use GoDaddy for basically all of my names just because that's who I started with a long time ago. And I've got so many domain names with them that I get a bulk discount every time I buy one. So I just keep them there. But if you go to like godaddy.com and, and you search in their little search bar to see if you can buy it, it'll tell you whether it's available or already um, owned or not. So um, look that up real quick and see, you know, if that's purchased or not. Um, some other things with uh, buying your um, domain name is um, what you may not know is you can have more than one domain name pointing to a website. So um, I started out years and years ago with a little blog called CurtisTucker.com. And so that was my personal blog. Well, now I've started branding myself more and more online in social media as that buzz guy because when people see me, they know I'm the one that does Enid Buzz. And so they say, hey, aren't you that buzz guy? Well, that has become my brand. And so now if you go to thatbuzzguy.com, which is more of a brand, or my name, curtistucker.com, both of those will take you to the same website. The thing is, um, you one domain name will not take you to two different websites, but two domain names can take you to one website. So, um, and even more, but you don't want to point, uh, back in the day, people used to think that, um, you know, having like 10 domain names, all with keyword stuffed in and pointing to the same website would help you rank in Google. And it probably did maybe back in the day, but that's why, 
uh, Google's always changing their algorithm because they're trying to prevent things like that. So, so don't go overboard. You know, I'd stick with maybe no more than two having, you know, two different domain names. Um, and again, my problem was I had CurtisTucker.com already and, and it was kind of going. And so I just added that BuzzGuy.com. So I can tell people either one and they're going to get to my website. But uh, at this point, I am trying to brand myself a little more with that BuzzGuy. So uh, just be aware of that. And again, if you get started six months from now, you want to change your domain name. You can always keep the one you started with originally, come up with a new one, have it forwarded, to the website and then eventually kind of phase out the other one and you can do it that way so but at the same time you can have them both going in that way people that knew your website before can go to the website and then people that know your new domain name will get there as well so um, other another reason um, another thing that that I've done is um, we opened up a brick and mortar store where we sold t-shirts here recently and we called the store bottlecapsmercantile.com well, it's Bottle Caps Mercantile was the name of the store, so um, I just thought it was fitting to have Bottle Caps Mercantile as the website. So it was bottlecapsmercantile.com, but of course, that's a long URL. I didn't want people to have to type that a lot. And then when you do get a domain name, you're going to want to think about social media and try to have matching um, URL or usernames for like, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And so I didn't want people to have to type all that in for Facebook and Twitter and all that is either. So I also got BC Merck. So the letter B C and then M E R C dot com. So Bottle Caps Mercantile goes to our website, but BC Merck also goes to our website. And then I use BC Merck for all of my vanity uh, usernames for uh, Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and all that good stuff. So that was another re, another website where I had two different domain names um, going to the same website. So just remember that you can do that as well. Uh, second uh, rule I would suggest is only buy .coms. I mean, there's no reason to buy anything else. People aren't going to remember. Uh, .nets are the second uh, most popular uh extensions we call them extensions out there but dot uh, coms are so far beyond dot nets it's not even close so there's really no reason to buy anything other than a dot com um, it was called the dot com boom and the dot com crash for a reason because that was everybody had dot coms and so they're mo they're most popular the thing is they're the the one that everybody remembers if so um, back in the day um, people would say hey go to whitehouse.gov if you want to know what's going on with the president or at the white house and people would go home and they'd go to whitehouse.com and i think at one point somebody would put a porn website on there and they were getting all that those people going to that because nobody remembered to go to whitehouse.gov well you know, government websites are going to have .govs, but you're just going to, you know, we're not going to have .govs or .edus um, and probably not .orgs. Um, you kind of save those for organizations and schools and, and government entities. So, so really, um, buying a .net, I mean, why? You know, if you're um, bobsbait.net, you kind of look second class compared to bobsbait.com. It's kind of like, why aren't you bobsbait.com? You know, you're, it's just, it's kind of like your second place. You, you kind of lost the race. So uh, forget about .nets, forget about anything. Um, I would say that possibly, uh, now there, now since back in the day, those, those were about your only four or five that you could get. Nowadays, there's dozens and dozens of extensions you get. Um, some of the examples are um, like dot lawyer and dot pizza and dot me and dot um, photography dot buzz dot smile dot life um, tons and tons and tons of them, of them and those are kind of cutesy and fun but don't make those your main websites but so what I did was I've got enidbuzz.com and then when the buzzes came out I thought well that would be kind of cool to own enid.buzz which actually takes three letters off of my domain name so if you go to enid.buzz that will also forward you to enidbuzz.com another reason I bought enid.buzz was I didn't want somebody else to buy it and put a competing website on it and then people be confused 
as to which was which. So, um, so anyway, so those two both go to the same website. So in, in a case like that, like let's say you're a photographer and you want Barney's photography, you might buy Barney's dot photography, but also buy Barney's photography dot com and then maybe just use the other one to send people to your website. But be sure that you own the dot com. Uh, so under, you know, unless it's just some really, really, really weird circumstance, I suggest, highly suggest you only get a dot com. Um, so uh, follow that rule as much as you want but again you're going to find that uh, when you tell somebody to go to a website that's the first one they're going to go to is the dot com so um, also and then um, like I had mentioned before uh, rule number three here is be sure that the name that you pick is available for all of the social media now it, it starts to get a little tougher because as we go along dot coms are all getting taken away and then all uh, usernames are getting taken and so it's harder and harder to find unless you come up with something really origin original so uh, trying to find johnsmith.com you're not going to find it trying to find John Smith as a username on any social media platform you're not going to find it so you know all the John Smiths in the world you know 26 of them put their middle initial in the middle of John Smith but after 26 you know they're gone and so you've got to start getting a little more creative but what I would suggest and a, uh, you're gonna find that a lot of stuff I tell you guys is um, do what I say not as I do um, over the years I've started so many different businesses at so many different times because I started this back in 1999 my online career and so I would have things established and then new things would pop up like social media and stuff like that so I've got a I've got a really weird mixture of uh, of things. Not that I so, but Enid Buzz. So if you go to Enid Buzz, pretty much anywhere you're going to find Enid Buzz. EnidBuzz.com. You're going to find Enid Buzz on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, um, Facebook, and all of that. But now my other entities that I've waited a little longer for, like that Buzz guy. Well, it was taken on a couple of things, like I think Instagram and Twitter, and so I can't get that. And so I on some of those I'm sticking with the Enid Buzz. But whatever name you come up with, um, once you come up with it and find out that the .com is available, go to all of the social media that you think you're going to use and see if it's available. If it is, snag it really quick. And, and I mean when, when I say snag it, whether you have a website or not, you can buy a domain name and never put a website on it. So just go ahead and go buy the domain name. Then you've got it reserved. It's yours. Go and sign up for all of the uh, URLs on all of the social media. You don't actually have to upload anything to them just yet, but just go ahead and reserve them. Now, if you if you if you're really stuck on a .com, but you can't get like the the Twitter account to match it, I'm not going to tell you not to go ahead and get that .com if you're in love with it. But try to come up with a social media username that's close to it, but try to use that on all of your social media accounts because it just makes it a lot easier because then you can just tell your audience you know go to any social media out there and then go to dot 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 and you'll find me but if you've got three or four different ones you're having to say well if you go to instagram use this one if you go to twitter you use that one if you go to facebook you, and that's what i have to do and it's kind of a pain um and so i wish i had um everything for that buzz guy or or a lot of the other things but um again the longer you wait the harder it's going to be so um get that as quick as you can so have your dot com match your usernames on your social media if possible uh, as far as a domain name the shorter the better just because number one it's easier to remember it's quicker to type um, if you ever do flip a um, domain name uh, you're going to get more money for it. So actually there are companies out there and websites that rank your domain name and put a value on it and so using certain words in your domain name and then having the length of the letters adds value if you ever want to turn around and sell your domain name which a lot of people do and a lot of people just flip domain names so the shorter the better um, I think the shortest um, domain I've got a lot I went on a, a buying spree one time and I bought as many six letter domain names as I could and um, I mean, I was making up words. I, you know, they're literally. You think of a real six-letter word, or think of a five-letter, four or five-letter word, and go see if it's available. And you're not going to find one. 
if it's a real word. They're just not available. They're all gone. Every word is gone. But even if you make up words, four-letter and five-letter words, it's almost impossible to come up with a domain name unless it just you know, makes absolutely no sense. Um, but six letter, there still are enough of those available that you can come up with some pretty wacky names. So, so I do have a bunch of six letter domain names, but my shortest domain name is five letters. And, uh, I bought it quite a few years back, but it's ehs81.com and that's just for Enid high school class of 81. And I just wanted a short domain name you know, to go for our class. So um, ehs81.com is uh, the domain name that I bought for my high school class. Uh, one of the six uh, letter domains that I bought was wheaties.com. W-E-E-T-Y-S. Wheaties. And so, and then I've got, like I said, I've got a list of other ones, but um and what am I doing? I don't, and I'm not doing anything with it. I just bought it because I wanted to try to get some six letter domain names while there was a few available. So I don't know what I'm going to do with those. Um, but, um, I'm just kind of one of those guys that just do it. You just got to do it. You got to get started. So I, you know, I bought a bunch of them just, just so I would have them. And so like, I think, I don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning of the show, I think I still have, I've got to have at least 80 to a hundred domain names still out. I still own. And most of them don't have websites on them anymore. Now, one time, almost all of them had websites on them. Um, okay, something catchy. If you can't think of, uh, if you can't find your name or if you can't find your business name or you don't have a business name, try to think of something catchy, something memorable. Think of words like Google, Apple, Yahoo, Monster. Who would have thought that a job website could be named Monster. But you don't, you know, for us that have been around for a while, when you think of monster.com, monsters, you know, Frankenstein and Wolfman don't jump into your head. You think of jobs. So think of a, a, a catchy name for your website or your business. Uh, again, I came up with my first domain name in 1999. I bought it in 1999 uh, at that time from Network Solutions, but, but all the way through from like 1981, back in high school, I drew cartoons in high school and I'd come up with the name of my cartoons and my little company and I called it Curtoons because my name's Curtis and the word cartoons and I just basically changed the A to a U. And so even back in high school and then all through college, I actually had business cards made up that had cartoons on it, you know, and then in 1999, when I was uh, going to buy, well, I wanted to put my cartoons online, it was just a no-brainer. I was, I bought cartoons.com because it was available and I didn't even think, I mean, so I just bought it. So, so anyway, that was my, my first catchy um, domain names. I've made up words, uh, well, like Wheaties uh, was one of them, but back in the day, um, again, a big cartoon fan, Scooby-Doo fan, so I took the word Jinkies, and zoinks, those two words are from Scooby-Doo, and I made my own word called zoinkies, and so Z-O-I-N-K-I-E-S, zoinkies.com, I've got that domain name, I used to have a bunch of stuff on there, so um, if you can't, again, if, if your name's not available, try to come up with something catchy, something fun, something people are going to remember, don't go really, really too weird on the spelling, or people are not going to know how to spell it, zoinkies, I think people pretty much know how to spell zoinkies. Um, so anyway, um, got that. Uh, I highly, highly, as much as I recommend buying a .com, I don't recommend ever using numbers or hyphens and you're going to say, hey, 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 but you did use numbers. Well, if you're doing a class website for a class of whatever year, then yeah, I would probably suggest, you know, class of 1968.com. It's gone, I'm sure. Class of Every year, I'm sure, is gone. But if you put EHS class of 68, it's probably going to be there. So so only in those certain circumstances would I use numbers. But don't use like um, I love you 2com and then use the number 2 because nobody's ever going to know to, when they go to find your website to put the number 2 in there. You know, don't replace a word like... T-O or T-W-O with the number two because people are never going to remember or they're not going to know how to find your website. So avoid 
um, like the plague, all hyphens and all numbers in your domain name. Don't use a trademarked name. Now, again, do as I say, not as I do. So back in the day when the iPads came out, I jumped on it and I bought iPadBum.com, just all one word, no hyphens, iPadBum.com. And so I would talk about what was going on with the iPad and different apps that you can use and different tips and things like that. Different, I would uh, review different accessories and everything. And so um, now Apple never came along and said, hey, you need to shut that website down, which they probably could have, but there were a lot of other websites and domain names out there using the word iPad in their domain name. That doesn't mean it's okay, and we probably, you know, um, they, they could have shut us down, I mean, pretty easily, just a court order, and uh, a judge probably would have said, yeah, you're using a trademark term, um, and you need to shut that down. But the, the problem with using a trademark term in your domain name is you can't, I couldn't do it like an iPad bum t-shirt and sell it because it had a, co a trademarked word in it. And so um, Apple definitely would have shut me down if I tried to sell any merchandise. So um, using a trademark name not only could get your website shut down or your domain name taken away, but you can't sell any merchandise. You can't trademark it yourself. Um, you just run into all kinds of problems. And so avoid. So if you're, if you're thinking of, of doing something um, it's a pretty quick search. Just go to Google and it'll tell you where to, there are places you can search for trademarks and just go search for it and see if there's a trademark on that term. And, and you got to look really close because um, there are trademarks that have expired. And so if they've expired, you can use them, but you, you have to kind of look and make sure whether it's still active or whether it's expired. But anyway, go ahead and do a search for trademarked terms that you might have in your name. Um, sometimes it might be easier just to buy an existing dom domain name. Now there's pluses and there's minuses to that. And so the minuses would be, you know, if you purchase a domain name that, you know, in, pri in a prior life was a porn website, um, you know, six months after you get it up and going, you may still get people coming to it and getting emails and them asking you where all the nudie pictures are. Um, so that could be kind of a, a bummer. Or, you know, the guy that owned a, the domain name before might have been spamming um, Google or, or doing things, what we call black hat, which gets your domain name or your website banned from being in Google. So you want to make sure you want to do some research and some searching around and make sure that uh, the website hadn't or the domain name hadn't run into trouble in a while because um, you don't want to take that on as when you start your own domain name. Um, there is a, a place called Wayback Machine. So go to Google and type in Wayback Machine and there'll be a link there and you click on it and it'll take you to the Wayback Machine website and up there at the top you can type in whatever website you want to search for so if, if you're thinking about buying one that's already existing um, type it in you know www.whateveritis.com and it's going to come up with these little bars and where there's a bar, you can click on it. Let's say it's, you know, six years ago or 11 years ago, you can click on it and it'll show you not every month of every year, but sporadically for most websites, it will show you what the website looked like in the past. And so if you go to cartoons.com, you can actually go all the way back to what cartoons.com looked like back in, I think, 2000. And then periodically throughout the decades, you know, it, it kind of gives you a glimpse of all the changes that I made to uh, cartoons.com. But anyway, so type in whatever domain name you're thinking about buying. And now one warning is if you buy an existing domain name, usually those are expensive. Um, again, you can buy a brand new one for around 8 to $12 if somebody already owns it. So what happens is people go out of business or they let their domain names expire or one reason or another, they lose them. The minute a domain name expires, usually somebody buys it. There's there's automated software that buys it for people. And so rarely does a domain name end and then go back on the market. Rarely. Sometimes they do, but rarely. And so what, what happens is there's these domain 
name buyers that do it automatically. And what they're after is, you know, if they buy a a used domain name, but the domain, the website used to get like, let's say it got, you know, 30 people to it a month. Well, they're actually buying 30 people a month. And so what they're trying to do is buy domain names that have traffic to them. And hopefully they're hoping that they'll continue to get that traffic through Google searches and things like that. But what they do is they buy thousands and thousands and thousands of these names. And when you're, you know, if each one of those gets 30 visits a month, then all of a sudden you're up to 30,000 visits a month on all these expired domain names. And so there, there's a lot of, it's a whole underground business in itself, but there are, there are reasons that people try to snatch up your domain name, especially if you ever got any traffic on it. So anyway, um, just beware. I wouldn't pay, you know, I wouldn't pay over 50 bucks. I wouldn't, I wouldn't personally wouldn't pay 50 bucks, but um, watch out because some of them uh, will try to stiff you and, and get a lot of money um, and really beware. Then there are people that we call cyber squatters. And so some of these guys at one point went around and they started buying up celebrity names and, and things like that. And then when the celebrity would come along and want to buy their website, or start their website, they would have to buy the domain name from these guys. And these guys were charging huge amounts of money. And so the celebrity started suing. And then I think that's when some of the laws changed that you cannot cyber squat. If you're, if you're using a domain name that somebody else probably clearly should be the one that owns that, you have to prove why you should own it, not them. And if you can't prove that, then they will take it away from you and give it to the person that owns it, like, you know, um, Madonna or now Madonna, I could see somebody might be, but uh, Lady Gaga, you know, so if you purchase Lady Gaga, she could come along and say, look, that's not your name. It's my name. And uh, she'd probably win and you'd have to give her the domain name. So, um, so those are the negatives um, on um, buying a pre-existing name. Uh, some of the benefits are, um, it's been said that the older the domain name, it might add just a skosh to your rankings in Google because Google figures if the domain name has been around 20 years, then it's probably a reliable website as opposed to one that just started three months ago, which might be a spammer website. So um, again, that's all in the Google algorithm and sometimes they might put it in and then some months they may take it out. So that's just one of those things where they do um, so many algorithm changes all the time. You never know which parts of the algorithm are working and which aren't. But uh, but having a, a well-established domain name that maybe, you know, was on a website that was really high quality and got really great traffic and never did anything wrong, then you're going to come out with a really good, and especially if you can get it at a good cost, you're going to come out with a domain name that uh, is really already established and on its way. So, um, you know, look at that. You can look, there's a whole bunch of auction uh, websites. And basically, and a lot of times when you type it in, if you type a name in that you're searching to buy it, you might find it, if you find it on a parked, um, well, no, not all the time on a park. Usually, if you find a domain name on a page that says it's parked, it's one of two reasons. Either the person just bought it and they're in the process of building their website, which isn't doesn't happen that often. Usually they'll have like a a coming soon page. But so what a lot of people do is they'll or it'll have or you know, this domain name is for sale and then you click and then it'll tell you. So so one time I uh, here's an example. One time back in the day when I was coming up with all those names, I came up with a name call and I wanted as short a name as I could get, and I wanted to have the word web in it because at that time they were saying domain names with the word web in them um, are valued more. And so I came up with the word webzot, webzot. And uh, so I bought webzot.com, and I can't even really exactly remember what all I had on there, but I had a really fun, cool webzot logo, uh, cartoony logo that went with it. But that was one of those, and I don't remember why it was like one of the only domain names that I bought from like not GoDaddy. I, so the first one I bought was from Network Solutions and then I eventually went to GoDaddy and I bought every name from GoDaddy since then except for this one time way back when and I don't even remember which registrar I bought it from but whichever one I bought it from they didn't have auto renewal 
And at that time, I wasn't into it enough to realize that I needed to auto renew it. And I don't think I even got an email telling me that it had expired, but it expired and somebody bought it and I lost it. And literally, there's no way of getting it back unless you, you know, you track them down and you find their email and you email them and they're willing to sell it back to you. And if they are, they're usually going to charge you a whole bunch of money. So anyway, so I lost WebZot. Not that I didn't, it wasn't that big a deal because like I said, I had a 100 websites. They were all thin content. They were just to, to get traffic. And so, uh, so I let it go. I did follow it over the years and decades and just in every now and then, there, you know, I'd see something on there. And then a lot of times it ended up on a um, domain for sale site. And so there, so I checked on it before I did this episode. And so WebZot is still out there. Somebody still owns it. And it is for sale. And so um, I probably paid $10 for it when I first bought it back in the day. Uh, today, uh, it is for sale. And it is for sale for $50,000. So... Um, you may think that's pretty crazy and like, wow, too bad you lost it. Yeah, but the thing is, nobody's going to pay $50,000 for it. So so that is one deal. If you do run across a domain name that you really, really want to buy and they have a ridiculous price on it, um, you know, offer them 75 bucks and see what they say. Uh, usually if they've got $50,000 on it, they're not. If they have like $300 on it, they might take 75 um, But if they have 50000 on it, they're probably not going to sell it for $75. But it never hurts to try. So they may try to get you up to 300 or, or something, but, uh, you know, give it a try. You never know. So anyway, so WebZot is out there for $50,000. If anybody, if anybody would like to buy it and give it back to me, I don't know what I'd do with it, but that would be kind of fun. So, um, you can check on that. So anyway, that is kind of, uh, how to get a domain name, um, kind of the ins and outs and the do's and the don'ts of that. Let me look through all my notes here to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. But um, again, I just want you guys to get started. You can start with blogger.com or Tumblr, and you don't even really need a domain domain name in the in the beginning because I just want you to get started. Um, you can start a podcast. Um, and get started without a domain name or without a website. But as soon as you guys can, I want you guys to get busy on your website. I want you to get that website online. I want you guys to get started tomorrow. You guys need to be blogging, podcasting, or doing videos tomorrow. And why I say that is once you get going, you're going to get going and you're going to get a month, two months, three months down the line. And then all of a sudden you're going to get that idea and you're going to be like, oh, this is what I want to blog about. Well, that three months prior to that, you know, you've learned blogging, you've learned how to type quicker, you've learned how to upload photos, how to, um, you know, optimize photos, you know, maybe a little bit about SEO, you know, you know, you're going to know just different things. So it's not going to hurt you to get started and start learning this stuff, even though you may not have that set idea of what product you're going to sell, or what side gig you're going to be doing, or, or the name of your business you know, it doesn't, you're going to figure that out as you go. And so get busy and, uh, and get something started. And then, um, we, you know, listen to this podcast or other podcast, uh, listen to as many podcasts as you can. I mean, definitely don't listen to just one podcast or read one blog because everybody comes at everything from different angles and they all have different, I mean, I've got way more knowledge um, from way back when. I, I, I'm li- I, listen to, I listen to a lot of podcasts, and like I listened to one, I think it was today or yesterday morning, and this the girl doing the podcast couldn't have been on the internet more than three years, but... You know, she was kind of coming off as this expert, and I'm, and you you, ne- you needed to have this business plan to get your website started and all this stuff. And I'm like, no, no, I started mine with no nothing. I just knew I wanted to get cartoons online, and I took the quickest route that I could, you know, to get them on there. You you just start figuring things out. So figure things out on your own. Everything that you need to learn to make money, to build a website, to start a podcast, to start a video channel is online right now for free. It is all online for free, but sometimes it's a pain in the butt to dig it up and find the right stuff. So eventually you might want to buy a course or have a coach or, or take some classes or that, but you don't, I'm just telling you, don't go out and buy a $3,000 how to get rich course because you're not going to, it just, it just doesn't, people are different. Um, Ideas are different. One course 
is not going to fit everybody. It might fit two people and they might eventually get rich on it. But the 5,000 people that maybe are paying for that are not all going to get rich. It's just not going to happen. So beware of what you buy. Um, try to learn as much of this stuff as you can. And again, if you can learn it on your own, it's going to be hands-on. Um, you're going to remember it better. So they say that um, to remember things, you remember things better when you write them down. And that's just because your your eye, your brain, your hand, all of this is going back and forth. And so you're going to remember it better. Same thing with, um, you know, setting up a website. You can read about setting up a website or you could listen to a podcast about setting up a website. But if you actually go do and you push the button and you log in and you push um, upload and then you're going to remember, you're going to know more about how to build a website. So um, so I want you guys to get busy. The next episode is probably going to be about the actual website. We'll probably talk about WordPress and how to get started with that. Um, and so I'm, I'm kind of trying to take you guys on a quick little journey here about how to get at least your website online. And then it'll kind of probably splinter off and, and, you know, one episode might be about branding or SEO, or I may just, I may go on an adventure and I may talk about what I'm doing or what my daughters are doing or, you know, so, so hopefully I'll try to keep it, you know, a little more entertaining and, um, try to keep everything, you know, kind of relevant, you know, as to what I'm doing, the journey that I'm going on, because look, I just, and I want you guys to know that I'm you guys, I'm just like you guys. I'm still um, trying to find exactly where I'm going to end up. I'm 57, but I don't feel like I'm there yet. Um, you know, I'm trying different things. I'm, I'm trying this podcast. I've, I've got a really nice uh, business going with Enid Buzz, you know, community news, a lot of advertisers, everything's going fine. I could sit at home and just do that and be happy, but um, it's just not enough. I want to try something new and something different and add to it. And so that's why I'm experimenting with these different new podcasts and video channels and things like that. So you got to keep throwing stuff out there. The more stuff that you throw out there and that you try, the more chances you have of something making it or something catching or something getting picked up or, you know, some TV show seeing what you're doing and then you're on the news. And, and that, if you, if you look into a lot of people, a lot of people that have made it, um, that have written books or that are gurus, if you search hard enough, you're going to find out that a lot of them got on a pretty big TV show or radio station or podcast or or reviewed, you know, some of them got a pretty big kickstart and that's why they got as big as they did almost overnight. Um, so without that, some of you are going to be struggling for a long time. Not that there's anything wrong with not making it super huge. I mean, you know, if I can get you guys to make $75,000 a year off of a website, working at home in your shorts, being with your kids all the time, you know, I wouldn't complain at that at all, um, you know, unless you just feel like you have to make a million dollars. And then I'm not your guy. I'm not, I'm not going to be the guy that's going to teach you how to make a million dollars. Now, I may be able to teach you, again, how to make $75,000, and then all of a sudden that gets picked up and, or something hits at the right time, and then you make a million dollars off of pure luck or pure timing. Hopefully that happens to a lot of you, and that could happen to me. And that's kind of, it'd be nice if that happened to me, but I'm not you know, that's not why I'm doing this. I, d I don't do any of this, you know, the m money's not my number one um, driving factor of working for myself. It's it's the freedom to get to do what I want, wear what I want, be where, where I want, when I want, and all that good stuff. So anyway, okay, I'm starting to ramble. I'm going to get out of here. You guys, please think right now, what domain name do you want to go buy? Go buy it. If it's not the right one, don't fret about it. It's only 12 bucks. You can always buy another one and get rid of that one. Um, go buy your domain name. Go to blogger.com. Get started. Download the Anchor app. Get started on podcasting. Now, I, I would highly suggest do what I'm doing. Let's do it all. There's no reason for you not to, if you're going to do a podcast, Okay, so, so the way that I do it, just real quick, sorry to keep going, but I write my blog post. That way I have my blog post on my blog because I want to do a blog. And so from those notes, I do my podcast. Well, while I'm doing a, a podcast, I, I, I'm like, well, why don't I just video it? And that way I have a video and a podcast. Now, what you could do is you could do the opposite. You could, in your mind, think about what you want to talk about, do your podcast, talk, maybe use some notes, 
video it, but then at the end of it, you could have it um, translated into, why did I just forget the word? Um, basically, you know, have the podcast audio turned into words. And there, so there is software out there now that will turn your audio podcast into words. And then once you have those words, you copy and paste into your blog. And it, so you're doing the opposite of what I'm doing. Your, your blog is being written by what you have said, whereas I'm saying what I've written. But anyway, do it either way. But anyway, there's no reason. It's not that it's not that big a deal that if you're going to be doing any one of those three to just go ahead and, and add the other two to it, because it's not again, it's not that big deal. So uh, right now I'm recording this podcast with a cheap little microphone plugged into my iPhone. That's my audio for my podcast. But then I'm also videoing it with an iPhone on a little stand with this cheap microphone, no mixer, no earphones, no no anything, and so um, you know, hopefully the quality is good enough that you guys don't mind. Uh, I could be doing. I do have really expensive. The the microphone that you see on my video is a you know a hundred and I don't. I think this one was maybe maybe a hundred bucks or a little over. Um, a Yeti Blue, a very nice microphone, but it's not even plugged in. I'm not even using this microphone. I've got this cheap, um, corded, uh, little cheapy microphone that you hook up to iPhones stuck in the foam, and that's uh, that's the microphone I'm using. So anyway, so please don't use uh, the excuse that you can't afford all the equipment or you don't have it because um, it just. And again, with Anchor, using the Anchor app, you don't even need a microphone. You just talk right into your phone. And like you're talking on the phone to somebody and it sounds actually sounds really good. So please, everybody get started. Everybody be safe out there. Um, send me some questions. Uh, Leo sent me some questions. Um, uh, if you guys have questions, go ahead and send them to me. I'll try to answer you. Buzz at buzzheadmedia.com. Best place to follow me is on Twitter. And again, that's twitter.com slash Enid Buzz. Or you could follow me at instagram.com slash Enid Buzz. Or I'm Cartoons also on Instagram. Uh, Curtis Tucker on Facebook, uh, CurtisTucker.com, ThatBuzzGuy.com. Uh, so you can find, you know, you basically type my name in or that buzz guy into Google and you're going to find me. So get a hold of me, Buzz at BuzzHeadMedia.com. And everybody have a great uh, day and I'll talk to you soon. See ya.